Uh, I want us to, to recollect that Labour had said, you know, first and foremost, we are not going to be dialoguing with government. If government takes this action, we are going to bring this country down. Well, yes, I mean, this is, uh, people, people have, like everybody says, uh, constitutional rights to be able to lead protest. But let us first and foremost look at the issues of the first subsidy. It's very, very important because you see the discussions in Lagos are very important. You are not happy that this neighborhood is meeting with the government. I am kind of excited that the Labour leaders met with the government. But like I said, I think I think the issue should be very, very clearly stated. What are they meeting for? And what is the essence of the meeting? You know, and what is the outcome of the meetings? There has to be an agenda for this meeting. If government says, let us be able to dialogue, and Labour says we're going to meet with the government, are we meeting to dialogue, are we meeting to meet demands? You know, this is must be clearly spelled out. Because, you see, uh, you have uh, prominent uh, discussions in, uh, in uh, Lagos with you who have made, you know, very, very germane points. But I think the most critical that I've been able to capture is that all of us agree that we must be able to create employment. You know, uh, like Fumi says, you know, she, she, she looks at a situation where this is not able to now allow her to be able to, you know, grow her entrepreneurial uh, skills or ideas, you know, without, without any uh, lot of encumbrances. We are talking about development. Uh, and again, I think my respected uh, brother, you know, Larry says that first subsidy removal is imminent. And I do not think our respected, you know, lawyer, Femi uh, Palana, who is a world class, he has anything against, I think from what I think he's trying to say, he's more concerned with the corruption that is embedded into this thing, and then who pays for this corruption ultimately. And that, that brings me to my stance here. In that, right here in Abuja, as I speak to you now, there are traders in Wuse market saying, open this market for us to go and trade. We have children who need to eat. In that crowd in Lagos that I have a channel supporter, you know, I need to also ask the people participating in that crisis, how many of them are saying give us jobs? And how many of them are saying we use a fair price? How many of them are genuinely employed? You see, we must be able to put things in their right perspective. Now let me ask you. I dare to say. Let me ask you. I to be corrected. Are are you then saying that you know if if subsidy is not removed, there's just no way the government will be able, for instance, to provide jobs. There's no way the government will be able to provide, you know, to to carry out its functions. For instance, like some of the items that have been listed on the short document that the government has released. For instance, talk about the River Niger Bridge. We know so much has been said in the past about that, even before the issue of subsidy came up. So there's just no way this government can function without yeah, removing subsidy. This is logic. The president of the country who is the custodian of our corporate image as a nation, has come to me to say, if I don't remove this subsidy, my government is going to collapse. The economy is going to get into trouble. The Minister of Finance has come to try to put more meetings to listen to say to you, we are borrowing to be able to not subsidize this petroleum that we are consuming. But I think one, one important fact we need to make here is that we in Nigeria have regretted diesel. Which is actually what it is we use in driving our economy. Because you talked about diesel, this is talked talked about diesel. diesel. I have to say, let me ask you this, because you talked about diesel, Mr. Yeah. Kengo. The question people have been asking, well, diesel was deregulated over six years ago. That has the price actually gone down. So it's, some people will tell you, it's not a good argument at all. Maybe it's not a good example to point to. No, I, 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 again, again, please, please, please understand the argument here. I, I understand the argument here. The argument is very, very simple. We are saying that I it regulates and will impact. We still now stand the chances of running against what you call the supplies of the uh, 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 supply. The central bank is going to have come to say to you, I that I that subsidy, that this subsidy is supposed to be production building. This is the argument. So if you are going to be the government of 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 the the government of 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 the a lot of people are raising issues of corruption, of a lack of trust in government, of how do you believe government is going to do this. Everybody has that here. But we are not going to go to the streets and make government listen to us. No. Because if government has said to you, the whole idea of removing subsidy is to be able to free some funds for me to be able to do X, Y, Z. 
and share this XYZ according to ABC. You should be able to say, no government, if you do this in this way, that way, this way, you might not be able to say, I think everybody's attitude here, everybody's first year, everybody's program here, is to be able to get the common Nigeria, to be able to have at least what looks like a life. Now, uh, uh, there's yeah. something else I want to ask you. There's something else I want to ask you, Mr. Kengu, if, if you can hear me. Um, you know, when subsidy is removed eventually, because, I mean, let us look at the issue of pricing here. Eventually, when subsidy is removed, the price of petrol, well, as we have seen today, it uh, goes for 140, 141 naira, in some places 145 naira. Basically, what the government is saying is that, look, you know, Nigerians should be able to, Nigerians should buy oil at the international price. There, there should be nothing like subsidy. Nigerians should buy oil at the international price. You know, so if an American, for instance, in America, um, a, a gallon of fuel, that is about four liters, goes for 300, I mean $3.50. Here too, it should be the same way. But some people have also argued that, look, the conditions are very different. Now, take a look at America, for instance. What exactly is the minimum wage in America? The minimum wage there is uh, $7 per hour. And then what facilities do you have there? So, and what is the minimum wage here in Nigeria? It's, it's actually 18 uh, per, per month. And some of the states, I mean 18,000 naira. And some of the states are saying they just cannot pay that 18,000 naira. So, that's one of the reasons why some of these guys are saying, look, we cannot accept this. So what, what would be your take on that? My take is very simple. We're talking about a country that produces its wealth. It's important to know that Nigeria is a country that is procurement country. So you cannot be somebody who's producing its wealth and want to want to now put subsidy, production based subsidy. Which can come in the form of taxes. Which can come in the form of one or two in the tax holidays and all that. To somebody who is reporting somebody's finished payments. And against a currency that you can't even match us against. So it's important that for me, I think the critical factor here is that government. Come on, listen to what that is saying. We want to develop a private sector driven economy for Nigeria.